This is the new Honda Civic Type R and it costs £47,000. Before it went off sale, the old Civic Type R cost £35,000. But is the FL5 really £12,000 better than the FK8? In fact, is it even better at all? Let's find out. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off by comparing the design of these cars. And one of the problems that a lot of people had with the previous generation of Civic Type R was this big, massive wing, which just screamed boy racer. It's one of the reasons why Honda actually released a version of this car without the wing, because they knew it was putting some people off. I'll give the wing this though, at least it looks integrated into the car, whereas this one looks more stuck on. However, this is more of an issue because you've got actually a two wing design and this lower spoiler actually gets in the way of the rear view mirror when you're looking out the back window. It's annoying. I'll tell you what's most annoying though. This is the design of this rear bumper. There is so much going on here. It's like the designer just couldn't stop designing it and like adding bits and pieces. Just utterly crazy. I also don't like this. The fake carbon fiber here. Awful, awful, awful. Whereas this one, it's just simpler. It's just more cohesive, it just works. Yes, it's a sportier bumper than the standard Civic, but it's not overtly so. And the diffuser actually looks proper, whereas this one's just a little bit more for show. There is one thing I definitely prefer about the old car though, compared to the new one, and that's the exhaust. I prefer the way that you have two larger outer exhaust pipes and one smaller inner, rather than the other way around on this car. It just looks a little bit wrong. Other than that though, the new car definitely looks more sophisticated from the rear. It's a similar story at the front. They look sort of similar, but there's just so much going on with this car's design. Just design, 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 more design. Just keep designing it. Don't ever stop. Also, that fake carbon fiber is really noticeable here. This car is also slightly wider by 15 millimeters. It's hard to tell that from this angle. This does look more grown up from the front as well. However, there are a few things that I prefer on the older car. I like these red flashes, pretty cool. I also prefer the design of the bonnet vent on the FK8 than on the FL5. There's also something else I prefer about the FK8. It gets 20 inch alloy wheels, whereas the new FL5 has downgraded to 19s. It has one less inch, which matters. Now in Honda's marketing material, they say, oh, we have designed the wheels in such a way that the 19 inches look like 20s. That's nonsense, they don't. They look an inch smaller. There is an advantage, obviously, to smaller wheels. They're usually lighter. That means less unsprung mass, which is better for handling. But anyway, visually, the 20s look better. And once again, I like the red accents on the side of the FKAs, which are missing from the FL5. But there is that boy racer thing. You know, the red accents do make it look a bit more boy racery. So do the wheel arches. They just look a little bit more stuck on with the FK8. And they are stuck on the rear of the FK because they're just plastic. The FL5 does get widened wheel arches, but they're just done in a way that looks more integrated into the car's overall design. And I think that helps make it just look more sophisticated. That more grown up thing continues with the inside of the FL5. So the design of the dash of the latest generation of Civic is just a little bit simpler and more traditional and nicer than in the previous generation car. In terms of the dials, you've got a bigger digital dials display. In the FK8, you've got this big space at the side of the dials, which are just taken up by the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. It's just silly. Whereas here, nice, clean, easy to read dials. Plus you get an extra dial for the plus R mode. I like that. I also like the fact that you have a smaller boss on the steering wheel, it just makes it seem a little bit more sporty. Then there's the seats. The seats in the FK are blooming lovely, love them. But these are even better. I like the fact that they don't have the black inserts, they're just red. In fact, there's more red material in this car because look down there at the floor mats, red carpets, and floor mats, whereas they're black in the previous generation model. And then there's the infotainment system. So not only is the infotainment system in the latest generation of Civic way better, but also with the Type R, you get an upgraded version of Honda's Log R. So it now includes this system, which will actually mark you based on your driving, such as your acceleration, your braking, your turning, your whatever that means, and your G. However, this does bring on to something that I prefer in the FK8. You see, I think the actual physical location of the infotainment system is a little bit better here because it's integrated into the dash. Now, I know it's better to have the infotainment system higher up so it's in your eye line, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road so much when you're operating it. But when you're driving a sporty car quickly, you want to look through the corners and having the infotainment system up there is a little bit more distracting. Now, I like this on this car, the red flashes on the dash and on the doors. Now, you do have some red flashes on the doors in the FL5, but it's done through ambient lighting. It just doesn't stand out as well. I quite like this fake carbon fibre effect too. It is better than the fake carbon fibre on the outside of this car. Another thing I miss in the new car is the red accents on the steering wheel here. They should have definitely added those in. 
However, one of the problems with the FK8 is that the back seats really do feel like the cheap seats. You know, you do have some red accents here and there, but the material they've used on these seats is just horrendous. It feels like something out of the most budget of budget cars. And while I like the carbon fiber trim on the dash, the carbon fiber effect that they have on the back of the seats is just nasty. It's like on the outside of the car. Can't really fault knee room, it's spacious, and headroom's decent as well. It's actually better than an FL5. To be fair, there's not that much of a difference really, but if I sit right back, my head definitely hits the roof lining on the FL5, but not quite in the FK8. To make up for that though, this car actually has a 35 millimeter longer wheelbase, so that's the distance between the front and the rear wheels, which means there's a bit more interior space. And as a result, knee room is a bit better in the back, though knee rim really wasn't a problem in the FK8 anyway. Things are better though when it comes to feeling of quality back here. It doesn't feel any less expensive than in the front, so the seat covering is the same as you get in the front seats. This nice fake suede effect. Also, you've got the red carpets to enjoy as well, and I like the fact that you've got the Type R logo just etched into the seat back here. It's nice and that carbon fibre that you get in the seat backs in the FK8. Plus, while both the cars are four seaters only, so you only get two rear seat belts here in the back, in this new car, they've actually made made some use of the central seat by giving you a couple of cup holders there, which is handy. However, if you're after a performance hatchback with actually more power that's more practical than this and not really that much more money when you can see the offers that you get through it through CarWow, if you want to find out what the car is in the offers, click on the pop-out button up there for the link in the description below. All right? Mm, it's going to be surprising. What's also surprising is that the new car's boot is slightly smaller than the old cars. So here you have 420 litres, whereas there's only 410 litres here. Yeah, really, the difference is not going to be noticeable, is it? What is noticeable, though, is that the boot liner on this FK8 has Civic written into it, whereas the one here on the FL5 says Type R. And if you like facts such as that, you better make sure you're subscribed to this channel right now, if you haven't done so already. Do it now and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload, which will include a really interesting video with both these cars. So make sure you do that. Anyway, let's move on to something that's a bit more interesting than boot capacities. The new Civic Type R chassis is stiffer than the old cars. Also, it has loads of stiffened front suspension arms. Plus, they've uprated the adaptive dampers. And now in this new car, you actually have an individual driving mode so you can separate out the dampers from the other systems as well. So you can have it exactly as you want it, which is a good feature. What's also good is that they've stiffened up the steering system. They've widened the track at the rear. You also get a composite boot and an aluminium bonnet, which helps reduce weight. Although this new car is still 24 kilos heavier than the old car. It weighs in at 1,400. 429 kilos. The new Type R gets Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres, whereas the old car has Continental Sport Contact. However, some things haven't changed. For instance, you get Brembo brakes as standard with 350 millimeter discs up front, gripped by four piston calipers, whereas at the back there's 305 millimeter discs gripped by a single piston caliper. Also, both cars have a similar limited slip differential on the front axle. There's something else that's the same as well, pretty much. Both these cars use the same 2-litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. However, for the new FL5, Honda tweaked it slightly. They revised the turbocharger and it now has fewer fins. Also, they've tweaked the engine management system, improved the cooling and made the exhaust a bit straighter for better airflow. The result is a bit more power and a bit more torque. So the FK8 has 320 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque, whereas the FL5 has 330 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. Normally a manufacturer will replace a car because their current car, getting a bit long in the tooth, you know, it's falling down the rankings as newer models of various competitors come out. But with this Type R, it's still at the very top of its game. It is the best hot hatch you can currently buy. So really, I think they're only replacing it because they had to build a new normal Civic because they wanted to fit a hybrid system to it and because this one has been kind of slagged off a lot for being ugly. That all means that the new Type R the only car that it has to be is its predecessor, this one. So let's see what it's like. Well, it's absolutely blooming fabulous. The engine is really strong, bit of lag in it, and it doesn't make much of a noise, but boy, when it's on boost, it flies. Then there's the gear shift, absolutely sweet, super tight. In some ways, a little bit too tight. That is coming from someone who has money shifted one. I'm going to film a drag race. <laughs> got the wrong gear. Anyhow, it's a lovely gearbox. Another thing with this Type R is the controls are so well sorted. The steering, it's just perfect. There's a decent amount of feel to it. It's so precise, it's so linear. It puts the car exactly where you want it to go. Awesome, awesome steering. About as good as an electric power steering system gets. Then there's the brake feel. 
feels like a race car brake. It's firm, it's strong, it's linear, it's progressive. So good. But perhaps the best thing of all is the front end on this car. It's crazy. The way it works with the diff, it finds grip all over the place. In fact, this car almost feels like you're just driving a front axle that just hooks itself into the road and follows it wherever it goes. It is absurd. It's so well planted. You have so much confidence that you feel like you're in a racing car. You just turn it into a bend and it just hooks up and goes. So linear so predictable so natural and so so special one thing you can find with this particular type r is that if it's wet it does struggle to put its power down but when the tires are warm and it's dry it does a great job and even when it comes on boost it doesn't really torque steer or anything it doesn't tram line much it's pretty predictable it's actually a very civilized car now you can drive in comfort mode and the dampers are nice and compliant really even in sports mode it's bearable for the road and it does stop it leaning just a little bit here comes another corner the auto blip's doing its job just chuck it in nose hooks up on boost diff just digs in and goes crazy there's another mode i could go for which is type r but i'm not gonna in fact i will and you'll probably see what happens i will bounce about a lot it's too firm for the road another corner turning it in <sighs> off the limiter there sometimes because there's no noise really from the engine or the exhaust it's all just one big woo. you forget where you are in the rev range and you end up doing that but oh my god this car it's just so planted I mean, if it's a little bit greasy and slippy it will come round on you and it's sort of like it's got all the grip all the grip all the grip and then it hasn't got the grip and it's coming round but it's easy to correct on the throttle again yeah really really good it's insane the levels of grip this thing finds such a great car to drive in some ways it can be a little bit too much like you have to absolutely be going flying on the road to really get to the edges of its capability almost a little bit too serious on a track though i've driven this thing quite a few times on a track and it just blows me away i love it front wheel drive car still a load of fun a lot more fun than many 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 rear drive cars the new type r has a lot to live up to can it all right then new type r I love this seat. Just feels so right. Feels more like a racing car, the way you sit in it and the position of the wheel. You also seem to be a bit lower, but I think that could just be because the dash is higher. So actually forward visibility isn't quite as good because in the other Type R, it's a bit more like a mid-engine car, the way the bottom just slopes away. You've got a low scuttle. I like that a lot about the previous car. I also think I prefer the feel of the brakes in the old Type R. These are just a little bit more grabby at first and then a bit squishier and then engage ABS sooner just not as linear or progressive then there's the suspension so in sport or type r it's just too firm so i've got in comfort but thankfully i can separate all the functions so i've got suspension in comfort but everything else in full-on type r and then you notice this new engine well this engine that's been revised it seems more responsive a bit less lag so when you're coming out of a bend and you're on the accelerator it just responds quicker I still managed to hit the limiter though. That's because I was mid-corner. I didn't want to change gear. Oh! I tell you what though, having the actual shift lights rather than digital shift lights, they're just brighter. You notice them more. So there's less excuses for getting it wrong. There's also less excuses for doing a money shift because this gearbox just seems to be a little better spaced. I don't know whether it is. It just maybe it's just this particular car there seems to be a little bit more room for error, which is a good thing. I mean, it's still really, really tight and absolutely gorgeous. One thing I think is the biggest difference between these cars is the front end. I just don't think it's quite as dependable or as hooked into the road as the previous generation Type R. That car, like I say, is just all about the front axle. This seems less so. And the steering seems a little bit sharper, but less progressive. So you turn it a bit, nothing happens. And you turn it just a little bit more and the car is really rotating into the bends. And that brings on to the fact that it feels a little bit more mobile, a bit more playful at lower speeds. So when you turn it in, it's like rotating a bit more. So it's less about that nose and like the rear just following it round. It's more about the whole of the car, but then it doesn't feel quite so dependable and as predictable. And I don't think I can drive this quite as fast as the other one. The other one just seems to just go round corners like nothing else. This still does, but it feels like it's a little bit looser, a bit more edgy. And that comes to when you're putting down the power as well. So you can feel it scrabbling a little bit more. It tends to tram line more as well. So it's just a little bit more unruly. It's almost like they've set it up to be more leery, just a bit more. Ah! The other car is pretty full on, but it's like race car clinical most of the time. Whereas this is a bit more like a bonkers hot hatch. And it's a bit more like a GR Yaris in that respect. That it's just like a nutty thing. In some ways you can compare the previous generation Type R and this one as being like two different breeds of dogs, similar dogs. So an Alsatian would be the FK8 and this FL5 would be a Belgian Malinois. So ultimately I think that the Alsatian 
is the more obedient, more useful dog, and it's a better all-rounder. However, this new Type R is crazier. It's just a bit more bonkers. It's in some ways not as good, but actually more fun. And it's a bit odd because I thought it could be down to the tyres, but this is on Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss and the FK8 is on Continentals. Could be that, because it's cold today, the PS4Ss just need a little bit more time to warm up and they're not getting up to temperature well enough. Be interesting to back them back on track, but I actually think the older car is ever so slightly better to drive, technically, whereas this one is a little bit more fun. And I think what adds to it is the fake noise that's piped through the speakers. It just makes the engine sound a bit more fruity and that kind of a little bit more wayward nature, the way it rotates, the fact you've got more torque steer, this thing just feels a little bit more alive rather than just like a clinical weapon. So while I think I'm quicker in the FK8, I would probably pick this car to go out and have another drive in to see what I can extract from it. Yeah, it's good. And the engine is definitely an improvement. Such a tough choice. Both are awesome. Okay, one last thing to do. Let's see if I'm right when I say that this one seems to not put its pad down quite as well as the FK8. So I'm going to launch it, especially to 060 in 5.4 seconds. Let's find out. It's going to be way off that today. Where's the bike? Where's the bike there? Bit of a bog. There we go, spinning. Let's hook now. Considering all that spinning, a 5.79 isn't awful. We had a bog and then a spin. Right, let's get the FK8. Okay, so the FK8 version of the Civic Type R, especially to 060 in 5.7 seconds. Let's see what it can really do. Six point one four. The new one is quicker. The new one can actually put its power down better. Maybe. It's just all in my head, and the newer car is superior, but it just feels more lively and a little bit more unruly, even though it's potentially going quicker. If they've done that, then it's truly, truly wonderful. Even more reason for me to get it on track. So then, what's my final verdict? Is this new Honda Civic Type R better than the old one? Yes, it is but it's definitely not £12,000 better, which is the increase in price. Do you know what I'd do, personally? I would buy a used Honda Civic Type R, and to do that, I'd use CarWow. So what I've done is actually put a link, if you click the pop-out banner up there, I'll put the link in the description, to a page of used Honda Civic Type Rs, which you can buy through CarWow. And if you think about buying one, you can actually sell your current car through CarWow as well, just by uploading some photos, giving a brief description. Then dealers from across the country will bid on your car and you can accept the highest offer and the dealer country house, take the car away, put the money in your account, and then you can buy an FK8 Honda Civic Type R. It's a classic. And so too is this, to be fair. It's a win-win. I'm going to stop talking now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Do you agree with my verdict? Would you go for a used FK8 over a new FL5? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, just click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to sell your car. Thanks for watching.